uh, let's. Uh, the the Senate Banking Committee is voting on legislation Thursday, which would include sanctions against Iran. Uh, do sanctions work? Sanctions are basically immoral uh, because one. They don't affect the leadership of a country. They affect the innocent parties in a country, the normal citizens. And these particular sanctions affecting gasoline, affecting refining, uh, that's the man in the street that's being affected. And so, first off, not only are they immoral, but who the hell are we to be sanctioning Iran? They are party to the Non-Proliferation Treaty. They have followed that treaty. We, the United States of America, are in violation of the treaty. Article 6, which states that we should be diminishing our nuclear capability in the world. Oh, we make speeches about it, but we don't do anything about it. So in our arrogance, we're the ones at fault. Now, thank God that President Obama is trying to make an effort at negotiations. But just look at the grandstanding of the Senate committee and shame on Chris Dodd, who I like and respect, but shame on him for using his committee to mess up and screw up the negotiations that President Obama is trying to bring about with Iran by interjecting it with unilateral sanctions from the Senate. Many times the Congress really messes up and screws up our foreign policy with their own arrogance and they, oh, we're going to really show them. Well, they don't know what the hell they're doing is the truth of the matter. And in this particular case, they had to back off. One, it's not going to solve the problem at all. And God knows why they're doing this. Who, who are the contributors in the Congress to their various campaigns that are pushing them to unilaterally sanction and punish the citizens of Iran on a subject matter that is irrelevant to, to the negotiations. It's plain, it's, it's American triumphalism and arrogance and American imperialism at its worst. And it's not coming from Obama, it is coming from the Congress of the United States and shame on all of them. What about this underlying fear that Iran is going to create an atomic bomb? Oh, it's ridiculous. First off, our intelligence community tells us that they're not. But even if they were, so what? We have Israel that has an atomic bomb that has destabilized the Middle East. And so if Iran has an atomic bomb, so what? So we have a balance of power. Now, Iran has not attacked anybody outside their borders in over 250 years. Can we say that about Israel? Well, isn't that an interesting situation? So here you have a country that has no modern history of belligerence and, and all they're doing is pursuing a peaceful nuclear atom, which is any country in the world is entitled to do that and they are doing it peacefully. Israel didn't do it peacefully in a sense because they lied to the United States Ben-Gurion lied to the United States government, he lied to Eisenhower, lied to John F. Kennedy, that, oh, we're not pursuing an atomic bomb. Of course they were. But now we have our intelligence, uh, Ahmadinejad, the leadership of Iran, tell us they're not pursuing a bomb. And our intelligence tell us they're not pursuing a bomb. We take them at face value. But what, obviously, once they, and this is the reason why I am opposed to all nuclear proliferation for commercial uses. I'm opposed to it. I think that Iran's making a mistake in pursuing a nuclear, uh, peaceful nuclear atoms. Because the more you proliferate the production of energy by nuclear capability, the more you proliferate the capability of nuclear weapons. And so Iran, once they have the enrichment capability, there's no question, like Japan, they could then proceed to produce a bomb. But why do people produce bombs in the world? Not because they're going to use them, they produce them for defense. And so when we turn around and threaten Iran, that makes them wonder, are we going to attack them? Is Israel going to attack them with their nuclear capability? That's the danger. So who is the aggressor? Who is the one to be feared in the world? Countries 
that go to war, countries that have used nuclear devices in war, and it's part of U.S. policy to use a nuclear device as a first strike. I raised that in the presidential campaign, even with Barack Obama, and embarrassed him over that and the other uh, candidates. That's still American policy. I wish it weren't. It's wrong. And so uh, we have to take them at their word. Let's hope these negotiations can proceed with Iran in this regard. They have every right to doing what they're doing, and uh, there's no reason to sanction them. In fact, I would hope that we would stop any of the sanctions that presently exist because Iran has done nothing illegal thus far. They indicate that they're not going to do anything illegal. If there's anybody that's an aggrieved party in this with respect to the United States, it is Iran because it's the United States of America that claims it's for democracy that has destroyed in 1953 the democracy that it was in existence in Iran. So who is the aggrieved party? Who is the arrogant one in this contest between the United States and Iran? with Israel reporters are starting to ask more questions. For so long, we just accepted them as they're our allies and face value. What's your perceptive of what, perception of what's going on with Israel? It, here, let me say this. If you love Israel, and I do, I think Israel is a great country, can make a great contribution. If you love Israel, you have to oppose what they're doing as part of their foreign policy. I think Netanyahu is a terrible leader. I think that their policies in Gaza are immoral and, and should be brought to the, court, uh, the criminal court. There's no question about it. The uh, Goldberg, uh, is it Goldberg, I'm, I'm not sure I got the name right. It's Goldberg or Goldstone. Gold, Gold, Goldstone, I think. His report is, is tremendous. That needs to be brought to the UN and the criminal court. And it's sad, it's an embarrassment that the United States is siding with Israel and not letting that come forward. No, if you really love Israel, you want an Israel that is founded upon a moral basis of justice and freedom. And, and I think that a two-party state is really the answer. And, uh, and the sooner that, and, and I know that Jews in Israel are prepared to cede land for peace. It's the leadership, it's the hawkish leadership that have brought about this bunker mentality that exists in Israel and have used the uh, influence of APAC in the United States. Thank God we have a new organization, J Street and others. Here, during the Vietnam War, the most single group of people who were involved in peace and fighting war was the Jewish community. So if, if, if from the Jewish point of view, if you love Israel, fight against the, the, the way the leadership of Israel is, is going. It's going the wrong way. It's going for a continued war. And that is not in the best interest of Israel or the Jewish people in Israel and throughout the world. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, we get any extra shots of him sitting there or walking? Oh, we're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. Good. You got it. You got enough? Thank you so much. Yes, I did. You're, I see.